Hi everyone, welcome to Cuberithms. Today I am very excited because we're talking about F2L. F2L is very cool because it allows us to solve the first four corners and the first four edges at the same time. So it's faster than the beginner method. <coughs> F2L is done by creating corner edge pairs in the top layer and then inserting those pairs between their centers. Completing each F2L pair can be boiled down into five steps. Locating matching corner and edge pieces, getting both of them into the top layer, separating them, reconnecting them so they match, and inserting them into their slot. There are 41 basic cases, and all of them have a variety of ways to be solved. That may sound like a lot to learn, here's the good news. Number one, each of these steps can be completed in four moves or less. Two, a lot of cases allow us to skip some steps. And three, a lot of cases are very similar to each other, so there's only a few concepts we need to learn to be able to figure them all out intuitively. Let's get started. If you have a pair already made in the top layer, you are a lucky duck. You located the pieces, they're already in the top layer, you don't need to separate them and reconnect them because the pair is already made. The only thing you have to do is insert it into its slot. To do this, turn the top layer so the corner is above its slot. With white facing you, move it away from the edge, turn where it needs to go up, bring it back to match up with the cross piece, and bring it all down. Another way to insert F2L pairs is to turn the white sticker down into the slot, turn the front to move the pair out of the way, bring the slot back up, and turn the front to put everything back. That move is called a sledgehammer. Both of these methods work great, you can use whichever one you prefer. Most of the time, you won't have a pair already made. You'll have to pair the pieces up yourself. Take this case for example. The white corner is facing right and the edge is in the back with the other color facing up compared to the corner. We've located the pieces, they're in the top layer, they're not touching each other, we just have to connect them so they match and insert the pair. To do this, we can turn the corner toward the edge to pair them up. Turn the top to line up the pair with the slot, and then bring it all down. I like to call this the ultimate case, that's not an official term, I just like to call it that because it's super fast and a lot of cases will involve us trying to get the pieces into this position because it's so easy to solve from here. Here's the mirror of the ultimate case. White facing forward, the edge piece on the left with the other color facing up. We can turn the corner toward the edge, bring the pair over to match, and bring the slot down. What about this case though? We've got the corner facing forward and the edge in the back with the other color facing up. If we turn the corner toward the edge, this doesn't line up. We need a way to move the edge piece around without moving the corner. To do this, we can turn the top to move the corner out of the way and turn the slot up toward the corner. This will move the corner piece to safety in the bottom layer and free up the top layer to be moved. From here, we can turn the top layer to position the edge where we want it. Turn the corner back to the top, and realign it between its centers. Now the edge piece is on the left and we can turn the corner toward it and it lines up correctly. Turn the pair back and bring it down. Here's the mirror of that case. The corner is facing right and the edge is on the left. We can move the corner out of the way, bring the slot up toward the corner, moving it in the bottom layer, turn the top to reposition the edge, bring the corner back up and realign it with its centers. Now we can move the corner to the edge and insert the pair. This concept also works if the corner and edges are touching. Here we've located the pieces, they're in the top layer, but they need to be separated and reconnected to be solved. With the corner lined up between its centers, we want to turn the corner toward the edge so that when we bring the slot up toward the corner, it leaves the edge in the top layer. If we move the corner away from the edge, bringing the slot up moves the corner and the edge out of the top layer, and that's bad. But if we move the corner this way, it splits up the corner and the edge, which is what we want. From here, we can move the edge to where we want it to be, bring the corner back up, and realign it with its centers. Now we have the ultimate case, which can be solved like normal. Here's another example. The corner and edge are touching, so we can move the corner toward the edge, bring the slot up, move the edge to where we want it, bring the slot down, corner back between its centers, and solve the case like normal. Sometimes the corner and edge will have the same color facing up. In this case, we are not going to turn this into the ultimate case. Instead, align the corner with its centers and we're going to move the corner out of the way toward its side color. 
Green is on top, red and white on the sides. So we want to bring the corner to the red side and bring the slot up toward the corner. Now we can turn the top so the edge is right next to the corner. When we bring the slot down, the corner will line up with the edge and we can insert this pair like normal. Here's another example with red on top this time. We want to turn the corner toward the side color, green, and bring the slot up toward the corner. Move the edge to be next to the corner, bring the slot back down, and insert the pair like normal. If you have the same color facing up and the edges are touching, we can separate them the same way we did before. Turn the corner toward the edge, bring the slot toward the corner, move the edge out of the way, bring the slot back down, and from here you can realign the corner and solve the case like normal. If the corner is facing up with the two edge colors on the sides, you can turn the top layer so the edge lines up with its center. Turn the slot up toward the edge, Turn the top so the corner is on top of the edge and bring the slot down. Now you can solve this pair like normal. If the corner is facing up and the pieces are touching, we can separate them like normal. Corner toward the edge, slot up, move the edge out of the way, slot down, align the edge with its center, slot up toward the edge, turn the top to put the corner over the edge, slot down, and solve like normal. Jeez, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot in this tutorial. To do this, blah blah blah, solve it like normal, blah blah blah. Sorry if that's getting old. Okay, moving on. Everything we've covered so far assumes you have the corner and the edge in the top layer, but sometimes you'll get a piece hiding in one of the slots. Slots? Oh, my voice just cracked. <laughs> like here, the edge is in the top, but the corner is down here. To get the corner out, we need to bring the corner up, turn the top layer to move the corner out of the way, and bring the slot back down. When you bring the slot down, make sure the edge is out of the way too, so the corner and edge are both in the top layer. If the corner is in the top and the edge is in the slot, it's the same concept. Turn the edge up, move the top to bring the pieces out of the way, and bring the slot back down. From here, the pair can be solved like normal. If both pieces are in the same slot, we can bring the slot up, move the pieces out of the way, and bring the slot back down. Now the pieces are in the top, but they're connected. We could separate them like normal, but there's a way we can combine getting them in the top layer and separating them. If we bring the slot up, we can move the corner toward the edge, so when we bring the slot back down, it separates the pieces, and from here, we can solve the case like normal. If both pieces are in different slots, you can bring them into the top layer one at a time. Edge up, move it out of the way, and bring the slot down. Corner up, both pieces out of the way, and bring the slot down. Now you can solve this case like normal, although if the corner and edge are in different slots, it's probably faster to find a different F2L pair to solve first. When you solve a different pair, it'll automatically bring one of the pieces out of that slot that you just solved. The good thing about F2L is there are lots of different ways to solve each case, and lots of ways to find shortcuts and optimize the process. Like in this case, instead of bringing the edge into the top layer and solving it like normal, you can line up the corner on top of the edge first, and look at that, the pair is made. Now you can bring the pair up, out of the way, and down, and then solve like normal, skipping the reconnection step. There are tons of shortcuts and skips like this you'll uncover as you practice. A lot of shortcuts are more intermediate slash advanced territory, so I'm going to cut the video off here. That's all I have to say about basic F2L. Here's all the basic F2L cases with the algorithms and a visual showing how to do them. This took a long time to animate and render, but I think it looks really cool and I'm glad it exists. That being said, your support is much appreciated. Like the video, subscribe, check out my Patreon if you want. Right now it's just Sir Chicken over there, which, hi Sir Chicken, don't know if you know you're still a patron cause I closed the account for a while and reopened it and you're still here, but either way, thank you for your support, very cool. I hope this video was helpful and I will see you all in the next one, bye.